Hey everyone, well today we've got ourselves an A2442, these are starting to show up a fair bit more lately, so it must be their time. Anyway, this one was charging from about 40% and then just died, so let's get into it and see what we can find. Hopefully we can fix this thing up and get it back to the person. Let's see here we go. Alright, so it looks like this one has a skin on it, so that can make things a little bit more tricky for working on. <clears throat> you don't want to do any damage to the accessories that people put on their machines but every now and then you can run into hiccups like these screws it looks like they're getting in the way slight misalignment there nothing bad plus of course you want to make sure that you, you know, take extra pains to keep everything clean because this sort of stuff can pick up like bits of oh, random things on your workshop which is why I like to clean my workbench between jobs okay now usually if it dies while charging now this was also using a third-party charger not a original Apple but the charger was at least from what I understand of a decent quality one by the branding and things like that so you don't always need your charger to be a genuine Apple. You know, it is a USB-C standard. It should work with other brands too. But I suppose we'll be looking f at the USB-C inputs. And then we'll also be looking at the capacitors, the tantalum capacitors, and maybe the ceramic capacitors for a fault there. Okay, first thing I've just noticed here, I haven't... Actually, I'll detach the battery first. Okay. okay, so battery is disconnected. We'll take the main screw of the battery out, but I've just noticed there's a fluorescent colored staple there. Okay, let's have a look at this staple. Okay, it's not fluorescent, it's just got a red paint coat on the back. First thing I'm going to do is check to see if we have a short on PP bus. We do. Okay, well, that's actually a good thing in many ways because it's like, okay, we know what we're probably dealing with. We've got some kind of short here as opposed to a failure with the CD3217 inputs. If it was on the USB-C inputs, that makes it a little more complicated. So in this case, we're going to have to take the board out probably and have a visual check of the machine. Hopefully we can find the primary cause visually rather than having to do any sort of injection and thermal testing because the less you've got to do that, the less potential risk you're exposing the machine to. Can't see any explosion marks down here, so we might have a ceramic cap failure. Flip it over and see what we got. Yep, no big ugly visible ones, so time to go to the microscope. There <laughs> we go. Pretty sure that's it. Speaker amp one. Oh yeah, that's it. All right, let's see if the let's see if the short is gone. Yep, definitely no short there anymore. Double check on the PP bus. Good, no short. Now we've got to find out what that part was. So it looks like it was CR765. 
which is a 10 microfarad 25 volt 603 pretty standard cap tiny touch more flux one replacement new capacitor Alright, I think we're good. Time to put this back in and see if it works. Oh, let's do a continuity test. Just to be super sure. It's good. It beeped momentarily there because I swapped the polarity of the leads. See how this goes. That's what we want to see. I'm going to guess this battery is pretty much 100% charged. Up here we can see the icon. Just the fact that we're not getting a staircase ramp here. It's all good. Let's get this fully assembled and back to the customer. Alright, that's another one fixed, thankfully, this being a 2442, it's a fairly new machine and they're worth a fair bit still, so definitely good that we got that one up and running. Now it was nice to see also that it was a shorter capacitor that was causing the problem and not input stage issues from the CD3217s or the customer's charger. Uh, but while it's a little bit of a disappointment that the components on the board fail like this, it at least is a better kind of failure than having a voltage spike coming through the USB-C inputs or things like that. That tends to be more damage when that happens and it tends to be more complicated to fix and sometimes can have legacy issues. So this is a successful one, good way to start into the weekend. Thank you all for watching. I hope to see you next time. I'll catch you later. <laughs>